really intrigued by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, anybody else comments? Like to hear from everybody. I think it's an excellent job, especially that she really captured a lot of different colors in there and the hair is just really amazing. I don't even know how yeah. she did that, but I mean, I would have thought that maybe she would have went with one big mask, but, you know, because a lot of times they say don't focus so much on individual, but I don't know whether use masking fluid. Or All I did was I had a little uh, round brush and I just squeezed it with two fingers and made it intentionally split. Mm -hmm. And then picked up some paint without too much water, and it made sort of like streaky hair things. I tried using a brush like you use on trees. I don't know the name of it. You know that one that's um, fan brush. Yeah, and the oh. fan brush didn't work as good as just splitting down yeah. brush intentionally, making it you know splay apart. Yeah. Well, nicely done. Um, very, very, very good job, Alice. Who's well, I'm looking forward to more help on it. Oh, yeah. Where are we going to have <laughs> some more fun? Yeah. Who's next? Who's wound up ready? Okay, Deb is next. Okay, this, this is my image. All right. And, then, uh, and I did, I finished him. Oh, oh, oh there we go. Wow. Wow. That's nice. Gee. I think I, I like the, the, We have a master in our class. Oh, yeah. No, not really. <laughs> I like his skin color, but um, I, I would like to know what to do with the background. Yeah. So what, uh, what, what colors did you use on the skin? The ones that you had said, um, let's see, the browns yeah. and some oranges. Yeah. It's yeah. uh, uh, those colors are absolutely amazing. They're perfect. Uh, I I can't. I, a couple of things that I love about it is on his left side, the use of the colors and the blends give that reflection um, a suggestion that there is some maybe here uh, up there, but something's going on. It's just a perfect reflection. And then the nose here's over here, lower, yeah, right, uh, over on the uh, cheek, yeah, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Now let me talk about the eyes. Um, the eyes are very nice and uh, well done. Uh, you you did get the values correct. It's amazing when I see the values correct, and they look round. It's a it's a beautiful beautiful painting. Um, uh, the only area that we may want to talk a little bit is just a little bit more about the mouth, but we'll save that for later. Uh, but for today, uh, you, you, you just, uh, the colors are used. I'm glad I suggested those. I have to say, I love them. It's just gorgeous. Anybody else want to make a comment? It's beautiful. I love it. Yeah. Well, thank you. I like I like the way you have the glasses look like you're looking through glass, but it's not opaque. I don't know how you did that on the edges. Yeah, how'd you do that? Oh, I, I don't I don't even know what she means, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> I don't know. I just I kind of followed the picture. So yeah. And then the only thing I changed on the shirt was I thought that the white line was distracting. So I, I just I eliminated it because my eye went to that white line. Yeah, good call. That's a really good call. I really like the way you didn't follow the picture because hold that picture up. It is so dark. You can't hardly see his eyes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, really lightened it up. And I like it a lot better in your painting. Yeah, oh, thank is you. Is this a commission piece? Uh, no, no, he was just a, a fellow at a barbecue that um, actually it was a wake, my brother-in-law's wake. And um, he didn't, he wasn't crazy about me taking his picture, but I took it and I thought, I, I just really love this, the skin color and things. So I wanted to learn how to do that. And, and his oh. bald head, it was perfect. So very good. Who's next? Okay. Oh, I have one more though, actually. Well, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I figured I wanted to go along with the class. 
So I started this girl. Sorry. Oh, hold on. Let me uh, get you back up there. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. That's okay. I started oh, her. That's your next one? Well, yeah, because I figured I want to go along with the class. So yeah. The oh, uh, I <laughs> the shadows and the lighting on this are perfect. This is going to be fun. This was my 50th reunion. So, so oh, I just my. figured, let me, let yeah. me go along with the class. Okay. Let's do, see. Do yeah. I like this beautiful what you've done there. Uh, wow. And, yeah. And I, I know her eyes are very blue. Okay. Yeah. So there's a uh, two examples of you have to be careful not just to go perfectly with the photograph. Uh, you have to make changes. Uh, the, the, the white in the shirt was a great change. Um, a lot of people just will paint and it'd be exactly like the photograph. And then um, not really realizing that it's not, it's just, there's things that are distracting. It just doesn't look right. So that's nicely done. Really appreciate you sharing that. Okay. Okay, who else? Um, Robert is having trouble, technical problems, and he switched to his iPad, so you have to let him in on his iPad. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'll do that. I'm going to bring him right in. I got to bring Mark right in, too. I think we have now the whole gang here. I think so. Okay, anybody else want to share what they've done? Okay. Well, Anybody else want to share uh, what they've done on their portrait at home? Margaret, did uh, you work on one at home? <coughs> yes. Can you show it to us? Um, what did you say? Can you show us your uh, portrait you're working on? I think you need to highlight her. <coughs> oh. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, I remember. Oh my. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, look at the values there. Okay. What do you all think there? Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's really good. Yeah. Any comments from anybody? So what, uh, what do you like about it? I really like the format of this class. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think one of the, I love Zoom classes, but one of the weaknesses has been uh, what we get from the kind of workshop where we work on our own work and get advice. Mm -hmm. And this takes care of that. Oh, good. They're working in between sessions. Okay. So I really oh, like the format. That's fantastic. Uh, can you hold up the reference photo again for me? Okay. Yeah. All right. I see. A uh, couple of things. You can um, take a look at the bottom lids of the eyes. If you could lighten that and soften up the bottoms of those just a little bit, the lines on the bottom part of the eyelids, the lower lids. Bottom part of the eyelid. Yeah. Okay. The lower, that line across there. Um, um, I would soften up, lighten. Yeah. Right in there? Uh, yeah, the, the lower uh, the lower lid. Oh, the lower lid. Yeah. Just okay. That, yeah, just uh, light. Down the, there? Yeah, that's right. That line across there. Uh -huh. um, even though the photo shows pretty dark, um, I would not make it quite this dark because you lighten the eyeballs. And I, if you do that, then you kind of have to lighten up some of the other little areas too. Uh -huh. uh, both lines on both sides, you can lighten those up and soften the bottom part a little bit. You'll like it a lot better. I think it's a very nice job. Uh, it's a great start on a great uh, reference photo. Thanks, Margaret. Anybody else have a comment on that? I would like to see a little bit more blue in my color. In the eyeballs? No, no, his eyes are dark brown. But in oh the yeah okay yeah mm -hmm. we'll uh, we'll work on that. I think you you did a really nice job on the eyes. It's uh, very nicely done. Okay, thank you. 
Yeah, uh, thank you. Who's next? I know you're all wound up and can't wait. Just hold. Oh, Linda. Okay, Linda, we got. Uh, Linda's calling. Beautiful. She's calling from a hotel room today in beautiful, oh, beautiful. Arkansas. Let me turn okay. on. Hey, let's see the reference photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got two. This is what I used to draw from. Yeah, yeah. I did. Oh, adorable. <laughs> and get, uh, you know, get the, the values in black and white. I think it's easier yeah. to do. And we then call her powder girl. Oh, that's it. Okay. Oh, that's adorable. Good. Yeah. Pouty girl. And okay. then there for the colors, and you see different things. I mean, the black and white, and, and this is what I learned. Yeah. The black and white kind of washes the values out in this case. I'm not yeah, sure. It does well. somewhat. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking at the black and white when I painted this, but the thing of it is I had to do the face and I wanted to avoid a lot of uh, hard edges, but I have, I had some problems here. It's not completely finished. I, I had to, um, it was a little too dark, so I had to wash it out and I didn't go back and fix it. And then the nose is a little too hard here, but I can fix that later on. Yeah. And with the wash, I, I kind of made it soft, but broken up there because her hair comes down. And that's, I always like to put the skin into the hair. Yeah. So yeah. there's no hard edge, but yeah. I just love this little girl and her expression. She's my neighbor. And this is a kid next door, the, she has an older sister. And you always hear in the afternoons when they're playing in the yard and she's just squealing, just squeals of delight. And she's just such a happy little girl, except for this picture, oh. which my mother gave me. And I thought, oh, that's such a priceless expression. Yeah. We all feel uh, this. Yeah, pull that back away from the camera a little bit. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah, nice. Uh, the, um, the eyes will grow into the painting as you increase you know, you put the other values in. So don't change that until you get some of the other values. Okay, I think uh, Rob is up next. He's got his all ready. And uh, let's take a look, Rob. Okay, let's see. Uh, Ren, uh, sorry I was late. I... No problem. Yeah, that's a great reference photo. Yes, very. I... Yeah, okay. I, uh, the that reflection in the eyes is just very cool. Yeah. Oh my. Okay. Comments. Wow. Yeah. That's uh that's very nice. Um, anybody have that? Anybody have any comments? Okay. Realistic. It's really realistic. Yeah. Well, that's uh, Rob. He's going for realistic. Rob, that's nicely done. Um, although, <laughs> very got, nicely done. I got stuck using one color, of yeah. some, ver some version of brown, and I was starting to feel like a medical illustrator. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get there, we'll talk. <laughs> yeah. So this is, you're just practicing the eyes on this piece before you go to the actual, because that's four eyes yeah. there, right? Now, this is his uh, portrait. But I saw four eyes. Why did I see four eyes? Oh, OK. Yeah. All right. The, yeah. the top eyes are the first attempt. Yeah. Yeah, those are just practice eyes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything's yeah. practice. Yeah, good point. Thank you. Uh, and then, OK, a couple, uh, couple ideas. One is uh, less black and more uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber with a little red in it. Okay. Uh, if you can keep from it, black, black would be your last resort on a dark value. So uh, when you go to do this again, um, try to keep away from black. Instead, use uh, burnt sienna, uh, burnt umber with a little uh, red or orange in it. And, um, and see if that takes you dark enough. If it, if it doesn't, then you can add just a touch of, uh, of the brown side of your black. In other words, when you, when you mix... Um, uh, when you mix Burt's Sienna with ultramarine blue, then uh, uh, hold on a second. 
There we go. Uh, when you mix that, just mix it so there's more of the brown of the burnt sienna showing than the black. Other than that, um, uh, those are probably the best eyes you've done. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. Okay, let's see what we got. Um, all right, so I'm gonna highlight myself. Here we go. Okay, I was just looking at the wrong slide. Anybody else? Okay. Um, Banana, did you have one? I'm still working on the, the picture Ooh. right now. Yeah. But like, wow. And, I like it. And it's uh, based on this image here. I, I changed the image I had. Yeah. It seemed like, yep. it seemed like my grandson and my son looked similar. So I went with the grandson because my son had an undershirt on and I wanted him to have a shirt on. And I said, you know, maybe I'll go with that. And I'm going more with the black and white. But it's I'm trying to just focus on where we at right now. Good. Uh, tell and me a little bit lighter. about what you like. Uh, let's talk about just the eyes. What do you like about those? I like a lot about it. Well, I, I think that I'm trying to go lighter because I seem like I go so dark quick, but I was listening to some of the advice that you was giving on the other gentleman on the eyes too, to put a little bit more of the burnt sienna or burnt, um, or what color did you say? The uh, burnt one? sienna. Yeah, Pardon burnt me? sienna with a touch sienna. of uh, maybe orange in it, just mm -hmm. to give it a... Uh, Instead of looking like a black tone, it gives it more of a brownish uh, uh, flesh tone. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the place that you probably use black the most would be uh, with ladies, I guess men wear them too. Uh, I guess anyone who wears mascara. Mm. Uh, I actually have done one with a guy who wears mascara. I, you wouldn't know it, but it's just enough that uh, he likes it. It looks pretty cool. Okay, anybody, I think we got everybody. Let's get started with um, a couple things. We're going to do uh, the nose. Hold on just a second before I get too wound up. Let me uh, unhighlight you and highlight me. And I'm the highlight of the show. <laughs> Uh, everybody knows me well enough. I don't look, I do not like to be the center of attention. Would everybody look up here at me, please? Um, let's see. Let's, uh, I did a uh, quick video this morning and let's see if I can get her started. Um, just bear with me a second. I have it all skewed, skewed up. Bear with me. Get your palette ready. Get your palette ready. They have their palette ready while I'm looking for this file that I there it is so okay. good Well, I guess I'm not going to show it. After I recorded this morning, I, you know, remember, the uh, hardest part about file management is know where you put the file.
Okay. Guess not. All right, we're going to um, and we're going we're going to do it live then. Uh, I guess I'll show it to you next time. All right, so here's where we left off, and um, uh, what I did in the um, video is I laid down the first two or three values, and um, just a couple of things is what we're going to watch out for. So this is my practice preparing for today. Uh, a couple things is it does have, uh, see that light? Uh, it, uh, it, the sunlight hits her nose right here. Mm -hmm. And on the top part of the um, white, it's very pretty sharp edges here. And as it goes down, it softens. So this is very important because that gives it a look that is three dimensional of, from this hard, very light, and then it softens. See that as it goes down? That tells us that that nose is rounded and at the center of most noses is almost like a sphere, a round sphere. And so there is one here, a round sphere, you can see it. And then also applies to this other light, uh, the sunlight hitting her, uh, the other side of the nostril, it's sharp and then it softens. So another thing to really watch for is over on this side of the nostril, the sun is coming down here and it's making it dark right in here. And we have multiple sources of light. We have a strong sunlight, but we do have some ambient or some reflection off of maybe buildings or something in the area and you can see a little bit of light coming this way, forcing a shadow here, like in the hair, but also where it applies is that's also giving this, make this even darker in here because it's, it's both uh, being uh, shadowed from the nose and the glasses both ways. So we're gonna kind of really pay attention to that. So when I started this, I did it by layers. So we'll start today, if you have your paint ready, I'm going to um, start with, oops, I'm gonna start with it being um, where we can see it. That's always a good place to start. I'm going to um, zoom in a little bit. So, so the first thing we do is what I just did with you is, I really take the time and read the reference photo. So please look at your reference photo when you do this between classes. Look and see where those shadows are in the nose. Look and see what are the uh, elements and the values you put in that's going to suggest that nose is contoured. The nostrils are contoured, contoured. That shape is important. I've seen many a noses painted that are flat. So we're really going to pay attention. And um, you can use any size brush. I'm going to go to a number uh, four, I believe. Let's see. That's a number. It's a number three. It looks like a four. Uh, anyway, it's a silver brush. And I like silver, black velvet. Uh, by the way, I changed up my uh, color here. Let me turn the uh, palette back on. I, the, uh, I did have the magenta in here. Uh, what I did is I went to the alizarin crimson. It's pretty close to the same, except it has just the slightest more pink to it, whereas the magenta has a slight blue to it. And what I was finding is I, I was too much of that was uh, getting a little darker or bland than I wanted. So I can control that mark. I can, I can still add some blue. All right. So we're taking the uh, whatever magenta or, or losing crimson, whatever you have. I'm mixing that with a little bit of my engine yellow, my favorite color in the world right now. 
changes monthly. And I made a nice orange. And um, I can control that orange by adding a little more of the crimson, which makes it more red, or I can add more yellow. And I can soften that by adding just a little bit ultramarine blue. I use ultramarine blue because if I use violet, I'm just adding more red to it. I'm adding red and blue. So I just go to blue because <coughs> I have all the red I need. So if I add a little blue to it, don't add much, just enough you can see. I'll show you what that looks like when it's painted. So here's that color painted. And you can see it's just toned down a little bit. Now I'll show you the area that didn't have that. And it's pretty close. So it's just enough of that blue. There it is. I don't know if you can see the difference. And it's a, a nice combination uh, for skin color. So that's uh, crimson, magenta, whichever you have. I prefer the crimson right now, and um, Indian yellow. Indian yellow just has <coughs> a little red and yellow, except the pigment. <coughs> Excuse me, I gotta stop smoking. Uh, I don't smoke. Anyway, okay. uh, it has just enough of Indian yellow, it has a little bit of the orange, except the pigment, to, you, it's very difficult to match Indian yellow. So that's why I use it. Uh, it's hard to mix it and you can get pretty close. So this is, and you can see, if I just move it over more toward the yellow, it goes a little orangey. If I move it a little more toward the red, I can do that. And I can cool off this color with a little blue. And there it is with a little blue. So there's my range of colors right there that I'll be using today, all from uh, three colors. One is crimson, Indian yellow, and, um, and then blue. I didn't use the... Uh, um, Rose modder or the uh, or the rose color, rock or rose or anything. So I'm going to use these crimson, Indian yellow, a touch of blue, and be sure, Rob, don't put too much blue in it. Okay. Okay. Just, Do you have a substitute for the Indian yellow? I don't have that color. I have. Okay, so you, let's take uh, let's take yellow, yellow, lemon yellow. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got that. And if you have a rose modder, just a touch of rose modder, and you can get pretty close. And that's very close with the rose modder. I'll show you the difference. There's the mix I just made. And there is Indian yellow. So it's pretty close. Oh, wait. Yeah. Put it here where you can see it. There's uh, Indian yellow. And here's the mix I just made. Pretty close. Not exact, but that's as close you can get. So uh, do you have any rose that you might have? Uh, um, rose opera or rose modder? Do you have that? Yes. Okay. 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 You can get pretty close to Indian yellow. Okay. Thank you. So your colors will be, instead of Indian yellow, you're going to use yellow and rose modern or opera rose. One of those. That's what you'll be using. Okay, help. here we go. Are you guys excited? Eddie. Right. I, knew, I knew you would be. Well, 
So I'm going to put the first, um, the lightest color I'm going to use will be the lightest um, shade I see. So let me uh, clean up my spills here. So the lightest shade, or the lightest value is right here. I'm going to paint that first on the whole nose. Now, um, we, in our other classes, we painted the first color on the whole face. And you can do that. Um, I'm just showing you a different way of doing that today or in this, this series. So many times what I do is I will paint the lightest value first on the whole face. This is more of a cellular, a cellular approach, which is a different approach to painting uh, portraits. So I want to show you something different besides, you know, starting off with the whole values. Okay, so I'm looking in my palette, looking for the combination I want. I don't want it too red. I just want it actually kind of pinkish. So I try always, before I put that on my uh, painting, is to test it and see what it looks like. So I'm going to test that. I'm going to go a little bit more toward the red and I'm going to make it very light. I want it very light. So let's see what that, oh well, yeah. There's, um, I wonder how that dog hair got there. Hmm. Must be, somebody must own dogs. See very light. And I can also shift that if I want to just a slight yellow. See, I don't know if you can see that. It's moved. But that's as dark as that's going to be. No darker. Do not put this layer too dark. So here we go. I got it ready. I'm just going to apply that. Oops, too dark. There we go. And I'm going to move it more toward, I started with the yellow, as closest to the light. I'm going to slowly move that to a light pink. So it started with the yellow. I don't know if you can see it. It's light yellow tone closest to the light source. I'm gonna continue a little bit of that yellow right across here. And I'm gonna get this very, very light. There it is, that's what I wanted. And I'm paying very close attention to my reference. So you, you can start this anytime you want. This is just the first This will be the lightest value. It looks a little dark on the um, monitor, but it's pretty light. And one other technique, if you're not gonna paint and go over to the cheek, end it right here and just let it fade out because you can always come back in now and pick up where you left off. Again, this is a cellular approach to painting, a little different than the, uh, the way we painted on some of the others. Um, there's a little line here. Let me tell you a little bit about this. See this little red line here? Mm. Uh, if you look at my palette, when I touched in there to mix it, I picked up a granule or two of paint. Instead of really working it, and painting it, I picked it up. It was in my brush. So thus, it got applied to the paper. Okay, all of you can go ahead and do that if you like. I'll see if I can't get rid of that line. Usually I can. It's just pigment. Yeah. Just with a damp brush, yeah. Oh, rats. So this is the, we, what we did, we, we painted this, this uh, value here, but we applied it to the whole nose as its first layer. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I hear an uh-oh. 
you heard an uh oh, and here's what I'm having trouble with. Ooh. When I try to soften the edges, yeah, I mess up my wash because I'm not matching the wetness of the paper. Oh and yeah, comes back what, and then I have to go fiddle, and that doesn't bode well. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, you know this watercolor painting, as you all know, is a game. So again. If it's while it's still wet, mm -hmm. make sure you have no water in your brush. So I can soften that. Mm. I can soften that. But if I have water in my brush, I'll show you what happens. Oh, sugar. You'll well, get a bubble. You'll get a blossom. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't like what I did. Yeah. Well, mm. that's why we are practicing. Sure. What a concept. Practice. Okay, so uh, I can choose any value I want to work on. I'm going to look at this um, shadow created from the eye, uh, eyeglasses, the frames, and I'm just going to put that in now. And the reason is that way, if it is a little bit wet, it'll be no problem. Okay. And I'm going to look and see if all of those shadows are softened on any side. And it looks like they're not too soft. I just soften up just a little bit, the edges. While they're still wet, I soften that up. It's amazing. Uh, when I look at the monitor, it sure ex accentuates what I see. So let's uh, let's back up so I can see that in in practice. All right. Yeah. See, you can see what it's going to look like. Um, <clears throat> I'm not what you would call a photographic painter. If I were, I would have my number one uh, or double ought brush, which would be very fine, and I would paint just the ever slightest. Um, I am a detailed painter, but not photographic. I say detail. All the details are important. How's that? Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint basically the shadow I see being cast on that nose. And so I have that base. I'm going to go over top of the shadow again. That'll make it even darker. And just put a light coat on that shadow. It's going to be a hard edge here. And I'm going to show you this. If you're not paying attention, now it might be a good time to do that. Yeah. Uh, because it's going to come in handy. I'm just painting this side. And I'm going to just go ahead and and soften up this side. I'll come back to this later. Just soften it. And that's dry brush. Uh, it's a wet brush. Oh, dear. Just, a lot of water. I just pulled that paint over. Oh. Okay. On this side, I'm going to pull, put a little paint. And I'm going to pull that down here. It's a wet, it's a wet brush. Basically, it's a, a light wash I have in there. So I'm going to pull that on down. And I'm bring that over. I want to soften that up a little bit. And then I got to soften up this line here. I want it to good. I'm, what I'm doing is suggesting that that's a sphere there. See how I rounded that? It's sharp here, but over on this side, I, I softened that edge on this. So that shadow on this side is very sharp. I look at the reference photo, very sharp, very sharp. And then it softens. I'm going to just go ahead and bring this on over and I can join this a little bit later. All right, here we go. See what's happening? I mean, is there anybody that uh, would like to show that while I take a sip of my coffee? Caffeine. 
may want to show your show yours to us. I just I watched you. I'm starting now. Okay. Everybody caught up? Not no. yet. No, I watched you. You said it would be a good time. No, okay. To no, I, I listened. Uh, I listened. Give it a try. I did. I listened. I'm trying to get these from, keep these from bleeding back. Now, I kind of varied up that paint as I was putting it in my brush. Um, it's a very light wash. Oh, it's washing back. Why is it washing back? I don't understand. I was not supposed to do that. Oh, sugar. Not working for me. Darn it. Mm -mm -mm. And uh, by the way, I, I really, uh, I'm glad I practiced this morning in playing with the colors. I like this color combination a lot. Mm -hmm. um, it has slight yellowish right here as I blended it. And uh, I like it. It's, um, it's color, as you know, most of my portraits are colorful. And that's really, you know, your choice or your style. Does anybody want any input on your practice uh, nose? Okay, Ryan, here it is. Okay, let me here, take a look here. Uh, do I highlight your I iPad or the... Uh... Highlight. It's oh, I guess it's not so right bad. Okay, now it's great. Um, there we go. Oh, there we go. Um, hmm. Okay, let's take a look, Rob. I'm trying to find it. Hold it in front no, of your face. On, I, I see you. Yeah, you're over here. Look on the camera. We can see you really well. <laughs> yeah, but can you see the uh, nose? No, I can see you. Just, can you move the uh, painting over there? Okay. It, it's the other camera. Okay, not working. All right, another time. There you go. Look over here to your to your right. Oh. To your right. To the right. To the Look right. to your right. To the other ca uh, computer. There, I see oh. you. Okay. All right. Okay, Let's now I'm that nose. Oh I yeah. switched to, to another. Okay, here we go. Whoa, whoops. I'm gonna highlight it. Yeah, very nice. Yep. Okay. I like the rosy color. That works out really nice, Rob. Good job. And again, that's just two values. That's only two. Just think when we get 10 on there. Anybody else? It really, uh, it pays off uh, when you, uh, okay, Margaret, it pays off if you're patient and don't get in a hurry. Uh, with your, oh my, yeah, nicely done, nice, 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 wow. Um, yeah, I like those colors. What, uh, what shade, looks like you've moved, uh, the nose usually is more just slightish pinkish, you've captured that, um, your shadow is there, uh, it's really, what's funny about, not funny, funny, but what's cool about this is right. that even makes your eyes look even better. That's really great. Okay, nice job, Margaret. Thank um, you. Beautiful. Who else? 
was a, let me give you a quick, okay, Deb. Now, Deb got the A last week in the class. Let's see if she's going ahead for the, oh my goodness, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you got the sharp edges on where they belong. And as it moved, you suggested that nose has got a sphere around it. So as it went around, you softened it. Beautifully done. I love those colors. Ooh. Thank you. They're yeah, your I, colors. Yeah. I, well, I guess that's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, 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 your values are just impeccable. Anybody else? Well, I really had struggles with this. And I'm, I was trying to baby. Oh, that's nice. I was trying to babysit it. I didn't. I'm, I just messed it up. I no, really, you did. Wow. No, that's that's nice. Look, um, gorgeous. Don't remember, this is a practice session. This really is beautiful. Let me tell you why. Is the uh, the way that you have that dark spot. By the way, um, we we haven't got all the values in there yet. But the shape of that top of the bright, where the uh, or the bottom of where the yeah you know, where the sun's hitting the nose, as it goes over to the other side, you softened it. And uh, it's just amazing. Now, pull that back away from the camera. I want to see what it looks like. Look how nice that looks when you back up. Ooh, it's, yeah, this is coming nicely. It's a rounded. Watch thing. my blooms. Yeah. I'm having trouble with water. Yeah, well, uh, there are days like that. All right, let's move on. Anybody else want to show theirs? I'm tough. All right. If no one, you'll have to raise your hand. Let me change the view. Okay. I'm going to move it to the gallery. There we go. That way I can see you better. All right, here we go. Um, now we're going back to our reference photo, which, by the way, is the reason we have a reference photo is because we use it. And I'm going to look at this and see, you know, what I want to work on next. And so I look at the nose and my next value is, and, and why Linda, um, I wouldn't worry, we, where you are is exactly where we're gonna be next. I'm going to make this nose look rounder. Right along the center of the nose, it's gonna be lighter. Mm -hmm. And as it goes to the left and to the right, it's darker. That's gonna even make it look like the nose is rounded, which it is. So let's try that. And what I'm going to do is the old put paint down and pull it technique. I don't know what that's called uh, officially. I should probably go to, you know, some painting, watercolor painting websites and get caught up on the latest. But anyway, I'm going to lay this color down. Uh oh, we lost you. Oh, how did that happen? Let's see if I can. Wait. Oh, okay. Just a second. I need to highlight myself. Okay. Oh, I'm, that proves you're paying attention. Very good. How's that? All right. <laughs> so I laid the color down. Now, what I've done is I've cleaned out my brush and it's just got a little, it's got water in it. I'm just going to pull that over to this side. See how it softens as it comes over this way? So I'm just pulling that over. And now I'm softening up. Uh, keeping that edge tight on that shadow. And then I'm gonna just, I'll come back to this a little later. Just Are you with a bigger brush now? Uh, I'm still using the number three um, silver. It oh. actually, it looks like a number four. It does. It says three, but good. I know. I know it's not a three. It's It's got to be a four. But anyway, yeah, it's a little bit bigger. So then I do the same thing on the other side. It is darker right in here. So I'm going to put that darkness in. See, I'm just looking at it. So I lay the paint down. 
with a clean brush, I pull it over. Look at this. Pull it over. I pull some paint over here. I'm just pulling this. And look how this does. I just love the way that works. And so I'm just going to continue on down. And I need another value down here. I'm going to leave that white right there. I'm applying this paint and before it dries, I'm going to pull it. It's soft here, that's a soft. It's very soft here. And it's very soft here. But there is a little white area there. And before this dries, I'm gonna soften that up. This said it's going to make it easier when I come back later. Okay, so now we have the third layer. In this layer, the purpose of this layer was to give the nose contour. I don't know if you could tell, but it's slightly lighter right through here. As I read the reference photo, it's that way too. Not not white, but just a shade. I would say uh, on value, it's about a 10% difference, 10% lighter right along here. And then look how I love still the way this gives me that roundness right here that I needed. And now the bottom is starting to take a little more shape. So the next layer, I'm going to define, with that layer, I'm going to define this darkness on the bottom. Okay, I'll let you guys catch up if you have it. Just let me know if anybody needs more time. Uh, anybody? Okay. All right, so I'm going to move on. I'm still using all those same colors in my palette coming in quite, quite handily. The ones I started with, I haven't really put any more paint in there. So now I'm, I'm mixing up another wash. Uh, some call this a glaze. I'm gonna put another layer and what I see is some darkness right here. Right here and right along here. So I'm gonna lay down some color. And what I do, it's kind of close to the shape I'm trying to form. And what I see is it's soft right here. And I pulled some paint up here. And then it's also soft here. So you lay the paint down. And what you do is then you soften and pull. You pull that with a, a damp brush. So let me, let me back up from this so you can see that what it's looking like from a distance. See if you like it or not. Yeah, yeah. It's starting to look like a rounded nose. Who'd have thought? Okay. Anybody have any questions? You doing okay? So every, if you notice, every one of these shapes I'm painting on a face, almost every shape has a contour. So I'm very, I'm very conscious, conscious when I do it to make sure that shape I'm painting contributes to the contour to make it look round. So it's slightly dark right here. So now's a good time to put that in. Soften up the edge. There's that shape I see. See it? It's just a little bit like that. Just a little bit. Not much.
So I'm just kind of forming it the way I want it with a, a, just a damp brush. And that's kind of, you don't have to do a whole lot there. Just gonna put a touch in there while it's still wet. And I put a little touch in there, it's gonna kind of follow. So you can see it doesn't look right if you look close, but look what happens again when you go wide and back from it. And that's pretty close to the, uh, that dark area right there. I'm gonna go back up now and reinforce the shadow caused by the uh, eyeglasses. So we lost a little bit of that definition. So I'm gonna go back up. And it's there, but I'm gonna, it looks like it needs to be just slightly another, maybe 10% value deeper. And I say 10%, if you look at a value scale, um, 100%, let's say, is the, is the uh, darkest, 100%. And 0% is white or the lightest. So that's how much of a change it is. It's just a slight, I just went up another 10% darker, not much, maybe 20. And it begins to, um, and while I'm there, I was waiting for this. I wanna match that over here. So I just run a little paint across here and making that contour because it's the same color coming over. And I was waiting to do that until I had this other in place. And it's, remember every shape, among, how does your shape contribute to the contour or the, the, the shape you're trying to design? And all, almost every, um, facial shape you put on has a contour. So always, every time you lay one down, how did that relate to the contour? Now, the, this is what I call one of the key reference points, and it's dark. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint the opening of the nostril. Um, opening of the nostril, make a note, would you, everybody? It is never black. Okay. Even if you see black, don't put black. What's going to happen? You're going to, it's going to make it look like the person has nasty nose hairs. And um, so what I do is I mix up some of this red and I add just enough blue to it to make it darker. You can see how dark that is, right? Just let me show you an example. This is how dark that is. It's pretty dark. It's a... It's a reddish, almost reddish purple. And that's what I'm going to paint the nostrils with. I'm not going to use black. Try to stay away from black anytime you can. What color is that again, Ron? It is, um, it is my red, which, so it's crimson with a little blue to it. Okay. Yeah. Ultramarine blue. So use that when you can, instead of, now see, I put the line down, but here's what's great about that. I can come back out and soften the bottom part of that and even almost take that away. And I like the way that works. We're gonna leave it just like that for now. Just enough definition. I'm gonna make this a little bit lighter. I know someone was gonna say that, so I better do that now. And over here, it kind of comes across here, looking at my reference photo. And the line goes across here. Now, before it dries, now I'm going to, I'm putting it together a little bit of a wash here. And I'm going to put that right in here. And what that will do is it will both adjust that value because I need that one to be like, and it also softens up that line a little bit. And I see, see that little white spot under there? I'm going to leave that. It's got to come back. It's going to have to be a little darker. Mm, it doesn't look dry. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, so just softened up that line. 
So again, as we look away from it, it starts to make some sense. Oh, yep, yeah, that's a good nose. I have to admit that. And again, it's not real, just really pay attention to your reference photo and, and always every, every uh, shape you put on there, make sure it's the right value and it contributes to the contour shape. Okay, now I don't, what I don't wanna do is make the nose any darker at this point. I will want to, a couple things, is now address this area here, as I look at it, this area here darkens just a little bit. It throws a little more darker shadow. And you, know, you see that real close. You look at your um, reference photo. So it's got a soft edge to it. Soften that up just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and paint the rest of that shape I see there. Just going to go ahead and paint the rest of that shape, soften up the edges. Because we're going to be adding to that value here in a little bit. And up here, going to soften that. So that's kind of what that shape looks like. And it's going to get darker a little later. But now that that nose is the shape I see there is closer. So again, if we back up away from it, and I know all of you, are, I can see all of you backing up and getting out of your chair and looking at it from a distance, which is great, thank you. See how that little dark spot just adds another definition that that cheek has begun to be rounded right there, important. I'm not going to do any more to the nose until I do more of the painting. And now I'm gonna use the area underneath the nose. And let's look again at our reference photo. And you gotta really look close. There's a slight shadow and it's soft under the nose. I don't know if you can see that. And then there's a shadow on this side where it gives you the definition of the cheek that begins here and the cheek is rounded. So that darkness here, that darkness here. And then the other thing is right, well, I forget what, forgive me, I forgot the name of this. This little area that's usually indented on most people is like a little indent. It's just ever so slight, I'll make that a little darker. So let me demonstrate. I'm gonna mix me up a little, this one's got, uh, just a touch of yellow. I don't want it to be quite as pink as the nose. So watch this as I do this. It's going to be, I'm painting the shadow underneath. You leave that light. I'm watching my reference photo. Again over here. And it's slightly darker here, ever so slightly. Soften the edges. Hmm. And that's what I wanted. Not a whole lot. I don't like this little line. Well, the line is there. Never mind. This could be just ever so much the darker. 
that, that white area here was a little bit too white. And then I'm going to address just a little more darkness that's here. This will this this little darkness will make that nose pop. Watch, let you see how this nose pops now. It just I don't know why, but this just this little area here. You get it the right value, makes the nose really pop. And there it is. I'll show you what it looks like from a distance. See what I mean? Look at that. I hope all of you are having as much as fun as I am. There we go. Yeah, it's beginning to look a lot like the nose on this lady. So anybody mm -hmm. want to show and tell? Does anybody have any questions? I know you're working on it. Before we move to, I'm thinking we might want to do um, either eyeglasses or mouth, depending on what you guys want to do. Anybody want to show? Yeah, I'll show around. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. So uh, I like the way, now the, yeah, there's the light, the white that hits it. And the darkness that you just put on her left is a little bit darker than what I read in the photo. So okay. I want to take another look at that. Nicely done though. Okay. Yeah, you're really excelling. That's just uh, pretty proud of you, Rob. Anybody else? All right. Margaret's next, sorry. Okay. Okay, Margaret. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's wow. nice. I like the way you softened. Um, the only diff only thing I want you to do, that's just beautiful, is soften the line, just a hair on the white, shat uh, the white light that's hitting her nose. So look at that shape. And I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you it on my drawing, okay? Oh, okay, I think I see. Yeah. So this this line right this shape right here, you have it a little bit too sharp. I know that's nitpicking, but it makes a difference. Soften that line right there just a little bit. Okay, see it? thank you. Just soften that on yours. Let me highlight this. Oh, where uh, okay. Just yeah, just highlight that, uh, soften that line a little bit, and you'll see it make a big difference. Beautifully done, nice job. Thank you. All right, who's next on the on the hit parade? All right, mine's kind of oh, light because I don't want to be, I don't want to mess up and make it too dark. But okay, just a second. Uh, that nostril looks funny to me. I'm, hold on, let me not have hat. Funny, funny. Okay, there we go. All right, uh, wow. Let's start at the top of the nose. Beautiful, the shadow, soften up the shadow just a little bit as created from the glasses. But uh, I don't think you got the nostrils right. Did no, you... because when I soften the edges, my nostrils washed away. Okay, well, all you gotta do is go in and so look at your reference photo and soften that up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just soften them up. It's fine. You got them there, but all you have to do is soften the, soften, soften those up based on the reference photo. That's really a nice nose. Isn't it amazing how I can compliment people, their noses, and compliment their eyes on the, just, it's just fun. Anybody else want to share? Okay, so you're all touching it up. And um, all right, let's hear from you. What do you want to work on? Eyeglasses or mouth? Uh, mouth, I guess. What do you want to work on next? I'll just open it up. What part of the face you want to work on next? Mouth, mouth because it's right below it and, and we're, um, trying to match that nose okay. with the mouth, I think. Everybody agree? Yes. 
Yes. The right answer. Make my adjustments. Question, if you're trying to get some of your white back after you barb it, if after it's dry, can you go with a wet brush and then try and get some of it out or? Yeah, you can. You, want to, you can line it up by, um, I'll show you real quick how to do that. Find my latest uh, sketch. There it is. Okay, so um, I, if I want to soften up a line, there's some colors that are very permanent, very difficult. So we'll test that. If that line is too uh, sharp or that's too light, first of all, I put some water on there, just some clean water. If you are uh, wanting it to match something else, I would put the color, a wash that's similar in color over here. See? So get you a head start on that. Uh, and if you have a, um, a flat brush that's somewhat stiff, uh, works best. Oh, that, that brush had some blue in it. Always test that we're gonna go to another area. Always test your brush, see if I can get that out. Probably not. Oh, this paper isn't gonna work for that. Uh, So I'll I'll uh, I'll use the back of this. Which I have a spot that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say I want to lighten up the center of the nose. Uh, first off, lay some water across there. Just let it set for a minute. Okay, maybe not a minute. Be okay, and then I'll come back. And I will just lightly rub on it, not too hard. I don't want to scratch the paper. There it is. I've still got some blue in my brush, which is just fantastic, but it works. Then you take a paper towel. So you see how that lined it? It's just a matter of putting some water on there. Thank was, you. That, was that your question? Yes, it was. Thank you for the demonstration. Okay. All right, so um, let's let's do the mouth. And mouths come in all sizes. So the first thing we do before we start painting, we use discipline. And the discipline is we look at our reference photo. I know all of you are doing that right now. And we're gonna look really close. Now's the time to make a note of anything that's important. Uh, we're not going to worry about the whiteness of the teeth yet. We're just going to leave those white. We'll come back at the final. Almost when the whole painting is done, we'll evaluate those values. A couple of things we're really going to watch for is where the mouth starts on both sides. That shape right here is very important. Let me zoom in a little bit. That shape right here, there's a little tooth back here, ever so light. Um, if you're real, you want to go real detail, you'll make that value right there. But that shape right here is important. And the other shape is this shape right here. The angle, everything about it is important because it determines the motion of the person. They're smiling. And this is a kind of, uh, she's actually have what I call a forced smile. She's just grinning for the photograph. Uh, I don't think in that, it doesn't look quite as natural as I would prefer. But if I were taking pictures, I would take a lot of pictures of her. At some point she would forget that she's uh, having her picture taken and that smile would be more natural. But it's not bad. So that shape's important. Also the values. Then the next thing is the uh, lip, where that line right across there comes across that line. And then of course the bottom shape of the lip, if you look at, follow that line, it goes down, shows some of the teeth on the bottom, goes up because that's where your lips are, it goes down, comes up and goes down again. 
So if I were to draw that pencil on there, see if you can see it, it goes like this. So the line goes like, yeah, uh, it goes up and down the bottom lip. All right, so to paint that, um, you can run, first off, two ways. I'm gonna show you the more easy way is just to put a light wash on the lips. And lips tend to be pinkish. So I'm just gonna put a light wash, including this shape here. Make sure I, that shape's really critical. I can't emphasize that enough. It's just a very light wash. Oh, what colors are you using? Oh, oh, let me let me highlight this again. All right, that shape is very important. Is that alizarin? The what? Is that alizarin crimson? Yes, it's still the same colors. It's yeah, this one has a little more uh, crimson than it does yellow, but it's just a light wash. So I lay that in here just that shape I'm looking for. Then I go across and some of the lines, I'm gonna show you what happens here. I'm gonna really make sure, I wanna capture, I'm gonna leave that white. I wanna see if I can capture that reflection in the lips. It's not, it's not highly noticeable when you get back from it, but if you can get it, it really enhances. It's not always hard, easy to achieve. I'll show you why. So that goes across here. So I left that white, that's that white area of the reflection. And at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and put some of the lines I see in there. Just make it a few lines. And I'm gonna do the same for the top here. And so we'll come back to it. I just want to get the shape right. I do this lightly because if I screw up, I can always probably catch it. If I, if I go dark all of a sudden, then uh, I just don't have probably the chance to do it. I'm going to just go ahead. I'm going to leave the teeth white on the bottom that I see. And we'll pick up, we'll correct that uh, value a little bit later. So I'm just following this and going around, follow the shape. I want to also see if I can get that shadow I see there. I'm taking my time, if you noticed. I'm going to put this shape in. This will be quite dark value here underneath the teeth. And then I'm going to use the other shape. This one is very light. That value is perfect for there. Perfect for there. And just watching, what, I'm just painting what I see here now. And this is not the final. Just putting in some of those um, the lips, um, the texture of the lips, they're cracked and they're, um, they're very flexible. So that's why you have that, that look. So anyway, that, uh, so I step back from that and say, well, did I get the shape right? Hmm. Yeah, I did. So my first value is really making sure I get the shape correct. And this looks pretty close. That looks good. I'm happy with that. Did I get this right? Yep, pretty good. And I left light. I just left the white, even though that's not going to end up white, but it will be pretty light to su suggest a reflection. So you can kind of give an idea if you step back from this now. It's already beginning to take, you know, that's the shape you want. That looks pretty good. Now, the next thing I do, because now it's pretty dry, I put the next value, which will be the darkest value because I'm so concerned in making sure I get 
that shape right. So I do the dark value next, and I'll show you why. So I'm going to take my crimson. Here's my crimson color. I'm going to add blue to it. I want it to be really dark. I don't want it to be blue. I don't want it to be purple. I want it to be dark red, a really dark red. Yeah. I've seen people paint these areas black. Oh, my, I just like cringe. So um, it's not, so I'm going to pay attention to my values. Make sure my brush is loaded properly, which I just about didn't have it right. Oh, there's a dog hair. I wonder how that got there. Um, so I'm just going to paint that line I see. The shape. I'm just being very careful to get it right. That little tooth that's hardly seen, I'm going to leave that white for now. I'm just painting this shape, that real dark shape I see right now. So I'm painting a little bit of the contour. There it is. I put a little nick in there for the where the teeth separate. I'm just following that line across, that dark line that was there. Okay, that's good. And then I put the next layer. Uh, this is a, a flow uh, brush technique that we're going to kind of look for. When I do the lips, it's another glaze. It is, this is the red with a slight blue in it, but it has more, I went to more of the red, so there's hardly any blue in it. But it does make it a little bit darker. Now I put it on dark. That's so much darker put, than the photo, Ron. I put it on very dark. For those of you who have noticed, it's not going to stay that way. Because uh -huh. now I'm going to begin to pull that and shape it because it's rounded. And I just take a, a damp brush and I begin to shape that into what I want. Now I've kind of decided I'm going to make this part of the lip kind of vanish a little bit, just to emphasize a little, maybe a suggestion of light that comes in that source. So it, it kind of vanishes right here. And then I go to the bottom, add the next, uh, this is pretty detailed, I, too dark. Go ahead and make that darker with another layer. So I'm just really watching my values here. Went ahead and painted over this that leaves that suggestion of the teeth there. And then when that dries, I'm going to put a light glaze over the whole thing. It'll just slightly change the value of the white. 
And some people will use a slight light blue to suggest sky in there on the reflection. I don't, I've never successfully pulled that off. So I'm just telling you, you wanna, whenever you're playing. So this is just a very, very light, and I'm gonna go over this so whole thing, just with a very light glaze. So what that begins to look like, Yeah, starting to take shape. I guess I got to fix that upper lip a little bit. It's beginning to look rounded, which I want. Every shape I try to make rounded. And uh, that's, yeah, that's the smile. So I make sure, does that look like the expression of the, of the uh, reference photo lady? Let's take a look, see if it has some similarities. Yeah, it does, very similar. So uh, we're getting really close to uh, getting the mouth where we want it. Now, what was that glaze you did? You said something uh, about- Say that again. What was that glaze you did? What colors did you have in that glaze? A gray? Oh, wait a minute. I just put some blue in there and it looked really no, good. I didn't use any gray. This is still all the crimson uh, red and uh, on the dark side, it's a touch of blue. Okay. So while I still have that handy on my palette, mm -hmm. I'm gonna come back and put the gums in. Okay. So here I'm gonna put the gums in. I'm gonna just start at the lips and just bring that down. What I'm doing is making the bottom of the lips a little bit darker with this glaze. Across here, making that a little darker. And just a suggestion of this gum line that's here. That's just enough. And now I'm going to take a look. I need to get those lips a little bit more rounded. I'm going to put just a, a, a little more darkness here and there. Just pull that over. Might be a little bit too dark, but um, I tend to make the lips, for whatever reason, just a little darker than what they are. It's just a, a little quirk of mine, but everybody has their own quirks. Right, Rob? Everybody has their own quirks. Just going back with another value. Again, just using that same idea of the roundness of the lips, making it round. But instead of it being a wash, uh, uh, fading it off, I'm just putting some lines in there instead. Yeah, this is a little more of what I think I wanted. Maybe too dark. I may have to lighten this up, but I'm thinking it's going to grow into this value of the whole thing. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I think it just might. If I think it's too... If I think it's too dark, I can always lighten up that red. I'll show you real quick how I do that. I just put a little... Just put a little water across here. And just soak it up with paper towel. Yep, see it lightens that up. I like it better where it was before, but that's okay. So again, lesson, every shape, I'm looking for a way to make it rounded or contour. Every shape, I'm looking for what the cause of the light is. Is, it, is there a reflection? Is there a shadow? And then, uh, then it's all a matter of hunting 
and finding the right values. Uh, the color of the teeth, um, we'll go ahead and address now, just so I can show that to you. Uh, the teeth are more kind of an ivory color. Uh, no, unless there's a reflection, it has no pink in it whatsoever. So I'm gonna clean up a spot on my palette so I don't get any pink on the color. I don't want that. If you don't put any pink on the teeth if you can keep on it, unless the person's wearing lipstick and uh, you know, the lipstick got on their teeth. Well, you don't want to put that on there either, do you? Wait, coffee time. Oh, oh it's, uh, I, I drink very, very dark chocolate. I, I'm coffee, I'm dark <laughs> chocolate too. Okay. So the color is this. Make sure I make sure I have a, I just put a little water in there and it looks clean. I don't want it to, to have any color to it. Take ultramarine blue. Whoa, ultramarine blue. Look at that, ultramarine blue. That is not ultramarine blue. I had some red in it. So. Where we mix, there we go. There's ultimate blue. Okay. Very light. And add just a touch. I don't want anything that has red in it. So I don't use any yellow. I use yellow. Now, first, it's going to look like it's green. Huh. Okay. It looks greenish to me. That is. We don't, we don't want green teeth. Not like, you know, the kids we sat next to in school. What I'm going to do is see if I can. The opposite of green is what? Orange and red. It's red. It's red. It's red. And look what happens when I just put a little red in there. Uh, let me let me paint a spot so you can see the color I'm dealing with. Not. You don't want it to look red. I'm looking for it to be have a slight yellow. That's what I'm after right there. So what I did is I, I moved that yellow slightly with its complement to more of a grayish. And I'm going to I'm going to run that over just the first layer over the teeth. Very light. And the next layer I put first I'll say is that dark enough and then I'll start Figuring out, oh, I like that. It's perfect. Exactly what I wanted. So what it was, ultramarine blue, lemon yellow. So let me do it again, ultramarine blue. A little yellow. It will look greenish. We want that greenish. We put its complement, red. In this case, yeah, red. And when I start mixing that, it's just a touch more yellow. And what I get is a little mud with just ever so slight yellowish, which is the color of ivory. If you ever paint at something ivory, this is the color combination you use right there. I like it. And keep it light and always go darker. That's those are the color of teeth. What do you think? So then the next step would be is take another, the same color and begin, if it's dry, and it's dry, is to, the teeth are not flat. It doesn't take much to get them to look. So look at your teeth. And right across here, I'm gonna make just, put some suggestions. I'm looking right off of the, uh, back here, they're all pretty dark. This will take a couple of coats in this back area. What's that? So I'm suggesting that these teeth are rounded with these little 
highlights I'm putting in. You may not see it. Yeah, let me, let me zero in on this. You can't see that. There we go. Say, well, I can't believe that. That was that painting we just saw. So you look and see what I've done is begin. Now I can lift a little bit. I can formulate that. So I'm just making ever so much of a texture to make those teeth look like they're rounded. You don't have to be real fancy. If you're a you really like the detail. This is where you can put that in and just, oh, make the most perfect teeth. But what I'm after is not what looks like there. I'm after what it looks like here. And um, it's interesting. The uh, image looks a little bit slightly different, but it's close. Anyway, the mouth is coming together nicely and the lips. Let's take a look at what you got. Everybody, let's do a little show and tell. Who's ready? Okay, Ron, do it. Okay, Deb, you're up. Deb's up. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. Oh, sorry. You, got, you know what? Uh, I don't know. You're probably good at this anyway. The key there, what you did is the shape of the smile which is critical. If you get that right, you get, you get the expression right. Uh, the only difference is, is take a look at your reference photo and her left lip. See if it ends quite like that. Just ever so, there's just a slight, but that uh, Over here. lovely, yeah, that side right there. See if you got that shape right. I think you okay. did. I just can't tell. Um, yeah. But I like the way you captured the reflection and you made everything look three dimensional and the color is just beautiful, beautiful. Thanks. I, I thought she looked a little snarky, not like yeah. smiley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that would be my painting, uh, my photo. Oh, yeah. It, well, actually, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a contrived smile. So. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, I don't think that is a fully natural, you know, she's, she's uh, posing. But I okay. kind of like the way you, you captured that. I like it a lot. Nice job. Thank you. I Thank just, you. your colors are so electric. Yeah. Ron, I got to leave a little early because I got a, no, don't turn on. I got a, a 1030. Uh, so I wanted to go next if that's all right. Sure. Oh my, yeah, uh, very nice. You got the shapes right. Um, the subtlety of that darkness right under the teeth is critical to make that lip look rounded and bring out the depth. So I like the way you softened the, her right upper lip. Nice, and uh, it's just beautifully done, Linda. Beautiful. Thank you. You know what I'm noticing? I think I have a drawing error. I think that the nose is at the top is it's going because I'm looking at it backwards on your screen. I don't know if I'm going right. I think we got to. I think I do. I don't know. No, it's, it looks it looks rounded. Who mm -hmm. else? I want to hear from everybody. You're on the spot. Margaret, are you ready? Margaret's ready. I'm just going to call on people. Oh, my. Yeah. Look at that. Beautifully done. Um, first, I'm going to look at the shape. You got the shape right. You got the... Yeah, now back it away a little bit from the camera. Mm. Yeah, that's the way it's going to look right there. That's beautiful. Uh, mm. What we're going to do is we're going to soften up the bottom lip some of those edges and we'll do that when we go to the, the chin we want it to blend just a little bit in a couple spots but don't worry about that i shouldn't have brought it up but when we go to do the chin um and i'll do the same thing with mine i'll show you how to do that 
Beautiful, beautiful. I tell you what, um, I'm not so sure that Margaret might get the A for the day. Whoa. We'll see. That's amazing. Yeah. Not, it's, uh, it's something to, you know, to really work for. Okay, who's next? I'll go. Okay, Robert, let me find you. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Oh. oh yeah, oh yeah, you couldn't. Um... Okay, so tell me what uh, what you think about that. Well, I'm sorry to make you cringe with that uh, almost black color there under the teeth, Ron. Yeah, uh, you went pretty dark. Um, you can always go there, but don't start there. Um, okay. Take that lighter and a little more red to it. Um, okay. Th this is something you kind of like to do in a number of your paintings is to go dark pretty quick. Um, now, let me tell you what's really good about it. If I took that line out, the contour of the lips is perfect. It's just, of course, that dark line. And the mm -hmm. shape of the ends provide the right expression. You got that right. So the only thing you really have to work on is getting that, not doing that line so dark. Yeah. All right. Take Thank a look you, at your Brad. reference photo and see if that's what you see in the reference photo. But okay. That's, uh, except for that, Rob. Um, well, you would have gotten the A if you hadn't put that. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Who's next? I can go next. This is Benetta. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. We got a nice reflection. Yeah. We have. The only, let me um, look at your, I want you to look at your reference photo. Okay. And the shape of her, if, you, if that were her, her lip on the right, the way it ends, the top lip doesn't go up quite that high. Okay. Now it's picky, but it's important for the expression. It changes her from having a look like she's holding her teeth out to where they come back in. So see that line? Uh, I'll show it to you on my uh, drawing. So make sure you get it. It's this, uh, it's this line right here. Let me, let, me, mm -hmm. let me teleport here. Let me highlight myself. Oh man, it's like just so much to remember. There we go. Okay. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. This shape right here. Look at your reference photo and look how you painted that line. Okay. Would you, it, and when you look at, would you change anything about it? Okay. I need to change the shape. I think the problem I was having is that trying not to have so much pencil mark, I couldn't even really see what shape I had. <laughs> in there. Oh, yeah. So oh, yeah. I need to make the pencil a little darker. Yeah. But um, the rest of it, you got the shape right. It's just that little... Um, it's, yes, it's different. Yeah, you talk about smirky. Uh, yours is really <laughs> smirky. So uh, yes. if you just... And again, it's a lesson to all of us in that um, you really got to pay attention to those shapes because they, the mouth forms the expression. Okay, who's next? All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay, I can already tell. Um, yeah, you got the uh, shape right. The only... Um, Thing there, Jennifer, is, and I'll show you to you in just a second. Let me look a little closer, see what else we got. I like your, your uh, the lip, you didn't go with a real dark line. That's really nice. It does give it three dimensional look. You got the shape right, except for one of them. And I want to show you that to you, uh, if you would. Uh, take a look at, at my drawing or my painting. This shape right here, see if you got that right. Uh, it looks a little wider on mine. Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. All you have to do is just lift a little bit of that. But that shape right there is a critical for the expression. So okay. what I do is I don't even pay attention to shapes. I just look at your paintings and look like, is that the same expression? And then if it's not, then I go on a search and say, hmm, what's causing that? Okay, we got five minutes. Who else? This is your time. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we've got everybody who wanted to. Um, let's talk a little bit about today and next week. Uh, this was all about, um, again, uh, is a, the focus on contours and values to create the roundness. Every, every aspect of a face, there's something that's round, not flat. And all of you, that, particularly those of you who showed me your painting, um, all of you really improved. I don't know what it was like before you did this, but I like the way you showed contour. And, there's, and the values create that shape of contour. And also the attention to the shadows. So this, if you keep this up and apply this to the entire painting, you'll find the painting not being flat, which a lot of watercolor artists starting out paint flat faces. You're gonna find that has, it becomes very uh, emotional. It becomes very much uh, realistic even if it's not detailed, it's just that you'll get the expressions and you'll get all the important information passed on to your viewer. Next week, we're going to continue. What I'd like for you to do is um, work on your painting, whether it's a new one or the one you're working on, is to do the nose and mouth. And remember what we learned today. Try to apply that immediately. The sooner you can apply it, the more likely you're going to be able uh, to apply it in the future. All right, I need some input from you. What all, uh, what you think, where are you? And uh, what did you get out of today? And what you would like to improve about how we handled our day? Anybody? Oh, I like the emphasis on contours and uh, still working towards the um, uh, 3D look. Yes, that's two thumbs for that. Anyone else? Very good, thank you. I enjoyed the whole class. <laughs> uh, who's that? That's Alice. I enjoyed everything. Oh, good. Thank you, Alice. Deb, you get anything today? Um, reinforce I, anything or? I, I think I love the, the teeth. I learned something about the teeth because I was told that they can look like chiclets if you're not careful. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, you actually, that's a good way of describing it. For those of us remember what chiclets look like. Yeah, they, yeah. They still make chiclets? I, I don't know. I think yeah, they, so, yeah. yeah. They, I guess they they're do. all Tic Tacs now. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Rob probably has a bunch of chiclets in his drawer. No, we, uh, we have a tennis coach who, uh, you know, he brings his racket and balls and his chicklets. <laughs> yeah. No, I hey, Margaret, how did it go for you today, Margaret? I think it's really terrific. I've always avoided people and particularly portraits. So I'm really happy to Good. accomplish what I've accomplished so far. Yeah, I guess so. Benetta. I enjoyed the whole class, but I, like I said, it's helping me to see better because like I said, I think that if you have the drawing correct and can see the shapes and the values, then you're going to yes. improve, yes. you know, improve and I can see the improvement. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so we always remember why you have a reference photo. Excellent. Anybody else? Jennifer, how'd you do today? Uh, good. It makes a difference whether you have the drawing right in the beginning. Yeah, that does. Yeah. Well, we knew that. Uh, how's tennis going, by the way? Are you a pro yet? Or... <laughs> I'm getting there. <laughs> you working on the backhand or what? No, my backhand's good. I'm working on my forehand. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, keep that in mind, Rob. She has a good backhand. You might be careful if you say sometimes. 
<laughs> okay, so uh, next week we will pick up. I want to ask you, um, I found it very beneficial to review your uh, paintings in progress. Is that something you want us to continue? I think so, but let's hear from you. Or is that too con time consuming for you? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, you like it. Okay. Definitely. It's valuable. Okay. It is helpful. Yeah. Okay. We learn a lot. I think uh, we learn a lot by listening and watching what other do, people do. And uh, that's really the benefit of it. Okay. So uh, don't forget uh, this coming uh, Sunday's confab. Um, Linda has already signed off. She had another meeting. Uh, she will be um, the highlight of our confab on Sunday. So you might want to tune in. And the reason is I'm trying to balance it out, not just have professional artists or people of all different skills. Um, and she's very humble. She does a beautiful job with her landscapes, but uh, she's not really ever done this before. And that's, that's what I'm looking for. So uh, don't be surprised. I call on a couple of you here to share your experience in watercolor painting. Yeah, I'm already thinking about Deb getting her on one. All right, now you you take, yeah, don't, don't shake your head yet. We'll have that discussion. Uh, I wish you all well. And if you have any questions, send me a, um, uh, either give me a call, uh, text me, and uh, or send me an email. And Rob, thank you for your emails of support. And um, again, you made me laugh this week, uh, both my wife and I. Sometimes we have to share some of those with other people. So I wish you well. Keep painting next week. First thing we're gonna do, look at your paintings. You're on the hook. Thank, Thank you, Ryan. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.